Now let's look at a real DHT built according to the principles we just talked about. This is a system called DKS. So DKS is a real peer-to-peer -peer system that realizes the DKS principle that we talked about, but it extends it to do all the things that a real system has to do. For example, it uses local atomic actions for nodes to join and leave, which means if you have concurrent joins and leaves, everything works fine. Also, it has techniques for correcting the routing tables that reduce bandwidth that are efficient. So this is an important uh, advance in the research, the state of the art. So it's based on this common framework and also studies how to maintain the structure. So it has ideas for simplifying the maintenance. So this was published in a paper in the International Workshop on Global and Peer-to-Peer -peer Computing on Large-Scale Distributed Systems. So this is where the DKS was first published. So basically, DKS uses distributed KA research. It adds local atomic action for joins and leaves so that it can support concurrent joins and leaves. It adds correction on use for fixing the routing tables when noids join and leave or fail. It also has replication for fault tolerance. So the keys, the da data items are actually stored in multiple copies on the system. So we're not going to talk about that in this talk, but the real DK system also has replication. So the design principles of DKS, first of all, it's tunable. We can actually choose the routing table size versus the lookup length and also the degree of fault tolerance for the replication. Secondly, it has strong guarantees for the nodes joining and leaving, the local atomic join and leave. And third, it uses the, the messages that are part of the normal operation to fix errors in the routing table. This is called correction on use, so it's an efficient way of fixing the routing tables. So let's show how it works. So you'll, it'll look very familiar because of, we already mentioned the distributed K research. So we have an identifier space of size K to the L. We have a hash function. So the nodes are mapped onto the ring. So these red circles are the nodes and the little documents, the yellow documents are the items. And you can see that the items are stored in the successor nodes. So for example, item number 13, item number 15 are both stored on the first successor node that actually exists, which is node zero. Uh, item number one is stored on node two and so on. So to make the connections work well, there's actually two levels of routing. There's a basic interconnection. We actually have bi-directional linked list. So the nodes have predecessor and successor. So they're actually connected at a linked list that is going in two directions. So this already means that we have connectivity. So we, the nodes can already talk to each other. Of course, it's not efficient, huh? it's O-N hops but that means that the successor and predecessor pointers are the baseline for the connectivity. And on top of this, we're going to add the routing tables. So the routing tables can be seen as an optimization. And if there is an error in the routing table, if they're completely wrong, we can still do routing using the basic predecessor and successor. So this simplifies a lot the management of the routing tables. Okay, so we, on top of the basic interconnectivity, the predecessor and successor, we build the routing tables, which is called the enhanced interconnection. And this one will give us a logarithmic hop, a number of hops. So the basic interconnection is linear. It's just successor predecessor. On top of that, there's the optimization with the routing table that is jumping far away, giving logarithmic. At each node, there's a routing table, RT, of log kn levels. And there is, we can define a function r t, t of l of i. So at level l, then interval i inside that particular level. So let's show how it works. So again, let's use our trusty 16 node with uh, uh, identifier space with the number of nodes that are here. So the routing table will have two levels in this case. So let's focus on node one here. 
So it has both a successor and predecessor pointer, but it also has a routing table, node one. Let's say it has this level one table. So there are four intervals. So we're using k is equal to four in this case. So the whole space is divided into four in one hop. So the, the values of the routing tables are one, six, 10, and 15. Note that the actual values, five, nine, and 13, are updated so that they are using the first node that's actually in the system. So RT10 is not equal to five, but it will be equal to six, because six is the first node in the system. RT11 will not be equal to nine, but it'll be equal to 10. Uh, uh, and RT13 will be equal to 15 and not 13, because 15 is in the system. Okay, so these are the, the, the level one routing tables. Then there's a level two table, so each node has a level two. So uh, at node one, there's also a level two table. And this basically looks at the first small interval, the interval of which node one is the responsible node and divides it into four parts. You'll see how it works here. The node one, the, it goes to two, three, four does not exist. So the five does not exist. So it actually points to six. So it's one, two, three, six will be the entries in the level two table. And when we do lookup, we have to know whether an item is actually stored on the node. So we use the predecessor pointer for this, and we do interval routing. So if a key comes to a node, and the key has a value that's in between my predecessor and me, then I know that the key will be stored there. Because all of the values that are before me, but after my predecessor, will be stored at me. And if it is not the case, then I go forward, I route level by level. So this is interval routing. Let's do a lookup in a DAKS network. So look, assume that we're looking for node 11 and we're starting at node zero. So we're here at node zero. So first node zero sends your request to node nine. Note that the number eight, there's no node there. So it goes to node nine. And then we're at, now we're at node nine. It behaves similarly using interval routing and it, we'll send a request to node 12. So node 12 is the one that will actually be storing item number 11 because the predecessor of 12 is nine and 11 is between nine and 12. Okay, so now let's talk about joins and leaves. So we want to ensure that everything operates properly despite concurrent joins and leaves. So in fact, while a lookup is happening, there can be joins and leaves happening concurrently. So the join and leave operation is designed to be atomic, so it does not interfere with the lookups or with concurrent joins and leaves. So a joining node will be atomically inserted in the virtual space. So this requires three nodes to cooperate. So the predecessor successor and the node coming in between. So the new node will not immediately have the correct, fully correct routing table. It will have an approximate routing table from its current successor. And this will be corrected afterwards. If we have concurrent joins, they will be serialized. So if one join is in progress, the second one will wait until the first one is done using serialization, using a locking mechanism. So here's an example. Let's say we have node one here in a DKS. Now assume node 14 joins the system. So it has joined the system. So basically node 14 has joined and it talks to node 12 and to node 15. So it gets inserted into the ring. Note that node, one, node one's pointer becomes invalid, but it doesn't know that yet. Uh -huh. Node 1 has a pointer to node 15. Uh -huh. If I'm going to 13, it actually goes to 15. But since 14 has joined, it should be 14, but it's not 14 yet. It's invalid. Now this will be corrected by the mechanism called correction on use. So the way correction on use works is that Nodes are always talking to responsible nodes. If I'm talking to a node, but that responsible node might be the wrong one. 
because of nodes joining or leaving. But the messages during normal operation, they give me information. So if I receive a message from somebody, if you tell me from where you are contacting me, I can tell you whether you know the correct responsible. So if you send me a message, but I know that a node has joined, then you think I'm the responsible, but in fact, I will tell you that, no, 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 it's wrong. So I will correct you. I will help others to correct themselves. Also, if I hear about a node that I don't, didn't know about before, I know about its existence and I can put it in my routing table. So in the example that we're going to show you, we'll see so how it works. So basically, it works when we have lookup or insert messages from a node end to end prime. We add some information to the message on the end interval and the level, and the node end prime can compute the responsible nodes, and the node end prime maintains a list of predecessors so it can correct things. So here's an example. Let's say I'm at node 1, and I want to do lookup of 13. But remember, 14 has joined. Okay, so node 1 will actually send a message to node 15. Because according to node 1, node 13 is managed by node 15, the next successor. Node 1 does not know yet that 14 is joined. But node 15 does know this, because 14 has sent message to 12 and 15. So 15 knows that 14 is the predecessor pointer. So 15 will send a message back saying bad pointer to node 1. Key 13 is bad, but a candidate for correct node is 14. So what happens then is that node 1 will be able to correct things. And node 1 will know that the new uh, pointer that it should send to is node 14. So node 1 will send the green message, it will send to node 14. So node 1 has corrected its table. So that means when a node sends a message to another node, and that node knows there's a mistake, it will send a message back and it will correct things. This actually works pretty well. So this is a table of measurements. So assume now we have the ratio of lookups to an actual system size of 1,024 nodes. So we can see the average lookup length here, it starts by being very high because of all the mistakes. But the more you use it, it goes down. And after a certain number of steps, all the mistakes will be corrected. So this actually works well, so that the table basically dynamically follows the change in the network structure efficiently.